Seven to one Red Sox as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Stay tuned after the game for WB Mason's extra innings. New England's Red Sox post game show with extra highlights, extra interviews, and extra analysis hosted by Bob Rogers and a new lineup of studio analysts. After the last inning, the action is just beginning. After five innings, Romero Mendoza turns things over to Red Sox bullpen. Brandon Lyon in for Boston. 40th appearance of the season for Brandon Lyon. Four and five is his record. He picked up the win here last night against the Blue Jays. Pitching an inning in that game, allowing one hit, no runs, and did have a strikeout against his former club. There's Vernon Wells, who homered in the first inning, the only run off Romero Mendoza. And then he struck out in the third. Line on Mendoza tonight. Five innings, five hits. He gave up one run. It was the home run to Vernon Wells. Walked one and struck out four. Don, who's that hockey player we saw at the hotel last night? Uh, that was Sean Burke. Sean Burke. The goaltender. Yeah. I guess uh, there is a celebrity golf tournament going on uh, here somewhere in Toronto. There's some rumors about him maybe going to the Bruins or I think so one time. I don't know if they still are, but yeah. I know his name was mentioned at one time. Former Hartford Whaler goaltender. One one sent down the right field line. Overgoes Nixon towards his seat. It's coming full bore now. And has no play. A few rows back into the seats. Looked like for a moment he might have a chance. Put into another gear, but a foul ball. John Burke, of course, right now with the Phoenix Coyotes. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> I pick up a lot of their games on satellite. <laughs> Strike three to Vernon Wells for the first out here. In the bottom of the sixth inning, fifth strikeout for Red Sox pitching. Well, a big home run for Vernon Wells in the first inning, but since that time, two strikeouts. Mendoza got him on a curveball. Brandon Lyon there in the fastball. Vernon Wells will be heading to the All-Star game as a member of the Blue Jays, along with Delgado and Doc Holliday, as they call him here in Toronto. One down here is Carlos Delgado walked in the first fouled out in the third. And it sends one foul off the left side. In the series coming up here against the Detroit Tigers for the Red Sox. I'll have John Burkett go in the first game tomorrow night against former Red Sox farmhand Mike Marat. Delgado swinging and missing, down 0-2. They're pretty good with your hockey, but the Tom Karen really is on top of all hockey. He knows everything about hockey. He does that that show, right? On Ness the, uh, the pregame show. The pregame show. Yeah. But he knows a lot of those guys personally, too. Oh, really? Is there more to this, or is that it? No, I guess that's it. I, I just. <laughs> no. I thought you were going somewhere with it. No, I've gone as far as I can go. I, I'm just saying, like, I'm, he has tremendous expertise in hockey. Oh. As well as you. I mean, you knew that right away that last night that was Sean Burke in the elevator going upstairs. You, you hide it very well, but you know a great more about hockey than you let on. Yeah, but I mean, I would not have recognized him because I only know him with his mask and his equipment on. As a Phoenix Coyote. As a Coyote. <laughs> Did you know that Phoenix had a team in the NHL in all seriousness? Yes, I did. This is fouled off on the ground. Two and two. He's now talking to the truck, asking more information. <laughs> no, they, as a matter of fact, they were in Winnipeg and they moved to Phoenix. A number of years back. Two and two of the count. Wilson waiting on deck. Gets him. Well, Brandon Lyon's been very impressive. He strikes out Wells and Delgado. 
with the first two outs of the inning. Brandon Lyon has really turned into more of a strikeout pitcher, I think, than we anticipated. 43 now in 48 and two-thirds innings for Brandon Lyon. A little bit of a rut that he got himself into for a few games and uh, hopefully uh, out of that rut right now. Former Toronto Blue Jay Brandon Lyon has the first two outs of this inning. Tom Wilson sends it towards left center field. A bad read for Kapler didn't get a great start, but he's able to run it down. Not a good jump, but he's there when it counts to make the catch for the final out of the inning. In order, go the Jays in the sixth, 7-1 Boston. Hi, I'm Steve Schumann. Thank you for making Charlie's Mains number one new car and truck dealer. At Charlie's in Augusta, we have the best selection of Jeeps, like a brand new 2003 Jeep Wrangler for $14,995, or a brand new 2003 Jeep Liberty for $17,750, and the all new 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee for $24,495. Come see our five star award winning team and get the best value in America at Charlie's. Come see why over 6,000 customers a year buy cars and trucks at our dealership. You remember where you were when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood here and moved the nation? He shared with us his dream and together we changed the world. We've carried the hopeless to places of posterity, leveled mountains of inequality, built great monuments of encouragement. In our hearts we've built monuments of memories to that great man. Help build a national monument to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Please, call now. Section both across the region comes a howling as the boys dream extreme motorsports park opens its gate for extreme motocross action. Up to 17 classes of racing from 50 cc on up to the open class. Registration begins at 7, practice at 9.30, racing starts at 11.30. To find boys dream extreme motorsports park, take exit 54 on 995 and head towards howling, then follow the signs. Watch the action heat up on the track while enjoying ice cold pepper products. It's boys dream extreme. extreme. Boston Red Sox Baseball and Nefson is brought to you by Dodge and by Magner Cider. Al Orsillo and Jerry Remy back in uh, Toronto. Red Sox fans here tonight enjoying the score with the Red Sox on top seven to one. It's quite an interesting uh, bikini top that uh, that young lady has been wearing through this whole series. I noticed that it's actually a Red Sox top. Yeah. To know they sold those. Probably homemade, Don, I would think. Todd Walker, Nomar Garcia Parra, and Manny Ramirez. And Walker wastes no time out after the first pitch from Thurman. And he laces it into center field for his first hit of the night. And Todd Walker has been struggling five for his last uh, 43 before that base hit. <laughs> Takes that outside fastball and hooks it with some topspin right past Corey Thurman and up the middle for the base hit. So Walker aboard at first. Nomar is 0 for 3 tonight. He is lined out, grounded out, and flied out. And he chops this outside to third and foul. Lytle went five plus innings tonight, giving up nine hits. He was charged with all seven Red Sox runs. He walked four and struck out one. And Corey Thurman came on to work the rest of the sixth inning and out there for his second inning of relief. Lamar goes lunging and it's 0 and 2. Steady diet of breaking balls, not only from Corey Lytle, but now from uh, Thurman. Grounds a double play ball to shortstop. Second for one on to first. Not in time. Nomar credit to get out of the box very quickly and down the line. They get the front end of it for out number one. Yeah, and the other thing, too, it took uh, it took the second baseman, Hudson, an awful long time to get the ball out of his glove. Second baseman have to really be quick on that transfer. And you'll see here it's going to take him quite a bit of time to get this ball to first base. Almost like he didn't get a good grip on it. And of course, Nomar hustling all the way will beat that out. So 
Well, Garcia Parr at first, one away. And here's Manny Ramirez. He's been on base three times tonight. Two walks and a single. Blue Jays will be hosting the Yankees here over the weekend. New York coming in for a three-game series against the Blue Jays prior to the break. I guess uh, Soriano and Jeter both the back yeah. in the lineup for the Yankees. I was watching the uh, news when I got back to the room last night. They had some Yankee highlights, and I saw Soriano scoring a run. So. Kind of strange up here, you know. We we get um, Buffalo stations, mm -hmm. and uh, they really don't cover much Major League Baseball in their mm -hmm. sportscasts. They have the Bisons there, the yeah. Indians. Yeah, they, they, they get a lot of coverage. Yeah. They do well attendance-wise. You get a few uh, Major League scores, very little uh, Toronto scores. I think being New York, they'd have more of a Yankee twist to uh, some of their highlights, but they don't. It's really the Buffalo Bisons that they have very good coverage of. They really do very well there in Buffalo. There was talk for a while that maybe a major league team would go to Buffalo a while back when they first built the downtown stadium in Buffalo. It's a very nice ballpark. Cleveland Indians AAA team is there. Problem with my remote control up here in uh, in Toronto. I probably low on battery. So is there anything worse? I had to like re memorize the stations I wanted to go to. I could it would hit when I hit those numbers it would go, but the up and down thing. Oh, that's key. It wasn't working. It's not conducive for surfing. Very frustrating. Three two sent into center field. Vernon Wells is there. And there was two down. Back to the bag at first goes Garcia Parra. Well, it's the best baseball weekend of the summer, August 29th through the 31st. Four games in three days featuring trips to see Red Sox farm clubs in Lowell, Portland, and Pawtucket, winding up with a Red Sox-Yankee game at Fenway Park. Plus transportation, two nights lodging, meals, game tickets, and even a Boston baseball marathon T-shirt are included in the package. To reserve your spot, call 1-800-336-2267. You know what I miss most when we're up here? Let me guess, ESPN. Yes, baseball tonight. Yeah. You cannot get baseball tonight up here, and uh, it is very frustrating. You don't realize how much you love baseball tonight on ESPN until you come up here and don't get to see baseball tonight on ESPN. 1-0 to Ortiz misses, 2-0. I do, uh, fortunately, I do get days of our lives at the same time, 1 o'clock up here, yeah. My soaps are late. Yeah, see, I'm four not... days late. They're, they're four old. days they're late. old. Old and beautiful, four days old in Toronto. I've already seen it. It's no good. 2-0, softly lined to third. Eric Kinski is there to make the catch and to end the inning. Seventh inning stretch time from Sky Dome. Red Sox on top, 7-1. Whatever happened to the house call? The doctor would show up at the front door and treat the patient right there at home. Who does that anymore? Well, SBC does. Won't be long. Only our black bag is a yellow laptop. They may not be doctors, but they do make house calls. Phone? I have good news. The customer. That's who we answer to. SBC. It's not her birthday. Hey, Amy! Hi! It's not her graduation. Hi, Amy! In <laughs> fact, it's not any special occasion at all. Amy! It's Tuesday night at Friendly's, where a thick shake, amazing cone, or legendary Sunday is waiting. With your name on it. Here you go, Amy. You and me and Friendly's. is doing what others find impossible. Hamill, Waxler, Allen, and Collins. Personal Injury Law. 
Seventh inning stretch from Toronto. It's Red Sox seven, the Blue Jays one. Friday night, July 25th, is Four Sox Ralph Mucky night at McCoy Stadium. The first 5,000 fans under 14 receive a Four Sox rally monkey courtesy of Dunkin' Donuts and Nesson. The tickets call 401 724 7300. Log on to Pawsox.com. We head now to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Seven to one. Red Sox on top. And Eric Kinski leading it off. Brandon Lyon had a very good first inning of relief. Struck out Vernon Wells, Carlos Delgado, and then got Tom Wilson to fly out as the Jays went in order. Inside one and one now to Hinsky. Will you go to Aruba for the three days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week of the All Star break? Not enough time. If I had Bob Levine's corporate warrior private jet, I'd be going for three days, but no, I don't have that. That is reserved for uh, February, January, right after the Super Bowl, yeah. Now is enjoying time down at Martha's Vineyard for the summer. Really? There are worse places to hang out for the summer. The Sox pitching has retired eight Toronto Blue Jays in a row. But that will be broken up by a leadoff walk here by Eric Hinsky to begin things in the bottom of the seventh inning. Let's check in with Tom Karen, Tom. Don, it's going to be a busy stretch here for our Citizens Bank, not your typical fans. These three guys are from New England, and you are catching seven different major league ballparks in ten days. You got it. Whose idea was this? We actually started it last year. We went all the way down to Baltimore, Atlanta, and then some games in New York, New Jersey. We decided to keep it going. Now, this is the first of the trip. You'll actually go to the All-Star game. Yeah, we got a home run derby and All-Star tickets, and uh, this is our first stop. And where does it end? It's going to end in Pittsburgh next Friday night. Whose car? My car. Why your car? How'd that happen? Because it's big enough. <laughs> 3,000 miles over it. That's correct. Good luck. I hope the car holds out. Well, Our Citizens not. Bank, not your typical fans. Guys? All right, Tom, thanks very much. That's terrific. Lee Johnson batting with a runner at first. Grounded to shortstop. Garcia part a second for one. On to first to double play. And there's two down here at the bottom of the seventh inning. That's something I never did as a as a teenager, you know, or a young man. That'd be fun. What do you think going think around so, yeah. and if you're a real big baseball fan and able to drive around and see these ballparks, a lot of the new ballparks. I, I think though that I would not want to do it all in the van though. I, I think I'd probably want to have the chance to take a shower at a hotel. One of those guys is from Somerset, Massachusetts, I believe. Really? Yeah. That's your hometown, is it not? Yeah. The last name is Hall. Do you know Jerry Remy? Does anybody know Jerry Remy? You're from Somerset. I live right near Greg, uh, Greg Gagne, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. In there Somerset, sure. Greg does a lot of nice things uh, down in uh, that area. Did he go to Somerset yes, High? Yes, he's also? Somerset he... High graduate. Had a very great career with the uh, Minnesota Twins. Is he also in the Somerset High Hall of Fame? I would think he is. If he's not, he will be. But I would, I would imagine he probably is by now. What year were you inducted into the Somerset High Hall of Fame? Don, I can't remember yesterday. This is tough. I don't know. It was, uh, I would say, 10 years ago, maybe more. 10 to 15 years ago. Maybe 20 years ago. I don't know. Well, you're 30. Could it have been 30 years ago? <laughs> no, no, not that long. <laughs> yeah, Greg Gagne also played for the same high school coach that I played for, Coach Jim Sullivan. Strike three to Orlando Hudson. Third strikeout for Brandon Lyon, and the Jays are gone. We played seven, seven, one Toronto, or seven, one Boston over Toronto.
is this some kind of joke? Home Depot is more than a store. It's something new. Oh, cool. It's your first and only stop for the latest innovations. Wow. Cool. The newest ideas, like advanced decking material, the beautiful look of wood with less maintenance, really? and with enough styles to match any taste, all at a guaranteed everyday low price. Sweet. All the newest ideas in one place. Excellent. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. So we can get the low financing. Or the cash allowance during our summer sales drive. And the 770 warranty? Yep. We should do it. Uh, yeah. Now grab our best deals, like 0% financing for 60 months, or cash allowances of up to $3,500 on Dodge Caravan, America's best-selling minivan. Plus, get our 7-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Sweet. The remote control always gets them. Let us prove we've got the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer today. <laughs> Seven complete, seven to one. The Red Sox have the lead. Stay tuned after the game for WB Mason's extra innings, New England's Red Sox post-game show with extra highlights, extra interviews, and extra analysis hosted by Bob Rogers and a new lineup of studio analysts. After the last inning, the action is just beginning. Seven to one. The Red Sox have the lead as we head here to the top of the eighth inning. It'll be Kevin Millar, Bill Miller, and Gabe Kapler to bat in the inning. Millar's been on base three times tonight, a walk, a single, and a home run. He has scored three times as well. And Corey Thurman's back out there for a third inning of relief. He's been on since the sixth. with as much as their bullpen has been used in this series and they have been used using seven pitchers last night to Toronto needs a guy who can go a few innings. We talked about Pedro Martinez a few innings ago and that now it appears he'll be facing both Toronto and New York next time through and that seems to make sense. Drew. Yeah I think uh, after Grady had a night to think about uh, what he said yesterday this is the right approach. I mean you're going to get Pedro a couple of different things. First of all, a few extra days surrounding the All-Star break, which is not a bad thing for him, especially this time of year. He will work in that first series back at Fenway against the Blue Jays, and then he'll get the start in the opening game on Friday night against the New York Yankees. So I think this all makes a lot more sense than what we were listening to yesterday uh, prior to the ball game. What was the original thinking? I was trying to figure that out. Why, why wouldn't he have I don't know. thought of it in the first place? Uh, well, Grady said, you know, the games against Tampa Bay and Detroit are just as important, and certainly they are important. You have to win those. But you would also think that when you're chasing the New York Yankees, and we expect it to be close at that time, that you want Pedro somewhere in that series. So you get him working against the top two teams. I mean, the team in front of you and the team that's just behind you in the Blue Jays. And then you get him working against New York Yankees. And that seems to make sense. And I also like the idea of giving him a few extra days at this time of the year through the All-Star break. It sounds like the Yankees will be using Mucina and Pettit lined up for that series. Now, obviously, things can change between oh, now sure. and then. That's about two weeks off, right? Could be a trade between now and then or something, anything. Could I could be, be hurt. A couple of rainouts. It could be, who knows, you yeah. know, but uh, at least at least this will, uh, I think, quiet the talk shows for a while back in Boston because I think that would have been awfully tough passing that through of, with him not working against the Yankees. That had happened in the past, did it not? Yeah, Jimmy Williams yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, it certainly did, and it doesn't go over well back home, I can tell you that. The <laughs> <laughs> 2 1 will miss to Bill Miller. Here's Mike Timlin throwing in the Boston bullpen. We've seen two innings of relief from Brandon Lyon has done a nice job tonight. By the way, Pedro will work this Saturday against the Tigers, his final appearance before the break. Up the middle into center field, and Bill Miller has his fourth hit of the night. Well, you know, just when you started to think, well, maybe Bill Miller's heading back down 270, 280. He's hot again. 327 coming into the game. Four hits tonight. Four for four for Bill Miller. And has that average back up to 337, which right now 
would put him third in the league behind Melvin Mora and Ichiro. One out, one on. Gabe Kapler is one for three tonight. He's driven in two runs. Kapler's double in the fourth. Scored Millar and Miller. To give the Red Sox at the time a 5-1 lead. Then David Ortiz and Kevin Millar went back to back with home runs in the sixth inning to open it up a little bit more. And the Red Sox right now enjoying a 7-1 lead. Well, the Red Sox going to face a couple of lefties against the Tigers this weekend, and there's a chance that uh, Nixon would not get the start at the top of the order, that this guy may be at the top of the Red Sox order this weekend in Detroit. Yeah, I would think, Don, either Kapla or Bill Miller. This has popped up foul off first. Carlos Delgado ranging over. And he secures out number two, two down. As a matter of fact, with this performance tonight by Bill Miller, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he is the leadoff hitter. Switch hitter, of course, and uh, hitting very well from both sides of the plate this season. 313 right-handed, 335 left-handed. Of course, that'll blow up tonight because of the four hits. So two away, and here's Jason Veritek, who doubled his last time up. One for three tonight. Well, the matchups have John Burke hit tomorrow night against Mike Marat, the lefty. And Pedro goes Saturday night against Matt Roney, a right-hander. And Tim Wakefield, the Sunday game against Wilfredo Ledesma. Veritek lines it into center field for a base hit. And Bill Miller up 90 feet to second base on Jason Veritek's second hit of the night. Well, in just a few short days, Jason Veritek will be playing in his first All-Star game in Chicago. And I'll tell you, when they put his numbers up on the board, it's going to be pretty impressive. Hitting over 300, the 15 home runs, 54 RBI. Two down, two on for Trot Nixon. He's 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. And the foul's the first one off. Hey, look back over the last few years for Jason Veritek. And the most home runs that he's had in his career was 20 home runs in 1999 for the Red Sox. The highest RBI total was also in 99 when Jason Veritek had 76 RBIs. You'd certainly think that he would surpass the 76 RBIs and really the 20 home runs if he can keep it up. And he'll have 15 home runs or more at the break. Last year had only 10 home runs. In fact, the year before was seven. The year before that, ten. So the most home runs he's had since '99. The 0 2 to Nixon. Second strikeout for Corey Thurman, and the Red Sox are gone in the eighth. Boston on top, seven to one. McDonald's new Chicken McNuggets are made with all-white meat and are sprinkled with seasonings created by a fine chef. We like to think of it as poulet mignon. At McDonald's. Yes, that McDonald's. Up to 16 varieties of spring greens, sweet, juicy grape tomatoes, four delicious Newman's Own all-natural dressings, three amazing new premium salads, only at one great place. McDonald's. Yeah, that McDonald's. Your home is one of your biggest investments, and if you're wanting to add some extra living space with a touch of style and elegance, there is no better way than with an American sunroom. Today, more and more people are investing in their homes to make it a more comfortable place to get away and relax. With an American sunroom, you can enjoy all nature has to offer, and there is no better way to make your home more enjoyable than adding a sunroom or patio cover, custom designed to fit your needs. And your American sunroom can be worth as much when you sell your home as you invested in it. This exciting and luxurious room is often referred to as a green room because it adds a new dimension to both your home and your lifestyle. What a great place to relax or entertain. If you call now, you'll take advantage of the best pricing all season. We offer easy financing with low monthly payments. And be sure to ask about your free video and planning guide. Call now. 
Operators are waiting to take your call. Start enjoying your American Sunroom today. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back at Sky Dome in Toronto. The Red Sox with a 7-1 lead, and we'll review the numbers in this one. The Red Sox with a pretty good offensive attack. David Ortiz and Kevin Millar go back-to-back -back with home runs in the sixth inning. Millar has two hits, two runs batted in, and scored three times. And Bill Miller in this last inning got his fourth hit of the game. He's also driven in two runs. Ramiro Mendoza, the pitcher of record right now for the Red Sox, scoring the first five, giving up one run. And Corey Lytle was roughed up in his five innings, giving up all seven Boston runs. Brandon Lyon did a fine job for the Red Sox as the middleman of the three arms used here tonight, and he turns things over to Mike Timlin, who appears in his 39th game of the year for the Red Sox, a record of 3-3 three and three for Timlin, and he will come on here as the third Red Sox pitcher of the night. Posted a 2.55 earned run average over his last 29 appearances. And is not allowed to run in 19 of those outings. He is limiting right-handed hitters to just a 179 batting average. So he takes over for Lyon, who went two innings, giving up no hits, no runs. He walked one and struck out three. Timlin faces Chris Woodward, Shannon Stewart, Frank Catalanato, 9-1-2 and two in the Toronto order. Twenty thousand one hundred and thirteen on hand here tonight at Sky Dome. Hey. In there for a strike, and the count is 0 and 2. Two now to Chris Woodward. Went around and offered. Couldn't hold up and he strikes out. So Mike Timlin strikes out the first Toronto batter that he faces. That's the eighth K tonight for Red Sox pitcher. Well, Red Sox bullpen in this series has been absolutely outstanding. I mean, they have been. Uh, as good as we've seen them collectively as a group all season long. Three strikeouts for Brandon Lyon in his two innings, and Timlin starts off with a strikeout. This series, 10 and a third innings, no runs. 15 strikeouts and just one walk. Those are great numbers. And this is not the bad news Bears you're playing against either. I mean, this is a good offensive team. some action in their bullpen as the right-hander is up. The 1-0. In there for a strike. One and one. Didn't you kind of have the feeling, Don, that when you got to the park today, you were not going to see uh, Jeff Tam again in yes. that bullpen? <laughs> I had that, uh, that feeling after losing the first two games of the series. I didn't know that he would be exiled out of here, but uh, I did think that he may not pitch tonight. But he has been sent to AAA. To right, Nixon. There for out number two, two away. that there's action in the Toronto bullpen. He's got service not yet seen in the series up in the pen. See, last time we saw him, he was with, what, the Kansas City Royals. So two quick outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning and brings up Frank Catalanato. He had five hits last night, does not have a hit tonight. 0 for 3 in the ball game. He's grounded out, struck out, and lined up. Grounded up off the tall pitcher, Mike Timlin's glove, and that'll be a hit. Jumped up to try to make the play and picks off his glove and Catalanato's got his first hit of the night. Timlin very tall too. He's got to be at least a, what six 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 seven and the ball just uh, bounced right off the top of his glove. 
big high bounce. And even in that dirt pot, when you're on one of these artificial surfaces, that is very, very hard under that dirt. And that's why you see a lot of those high bounces that hit in front of home plate and a lot of times just bounce right over infielders' heads. So one on two away, Vernon Wells is one for three tonight. Responsible for the only Toronto run as he homered in the first inning. How's this one off Jason Veritek? Of course, Mike Timlin began his career in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. Timlin was drafted in the fifth round by the Blue Jays back in 1987 and was here in Toronto first in 1991 and stayed with the Jays right through 97. So here for their championship years in the early 90s. Cleared foul off the right side. Back and out of play, 0-2. You know what, I'll bet you a lot of these Red Sox fans of the here will just kind of drive right down to Detroit for the weekend series. Only about a four-hour drive from here. So that means it should be a very quick flight for us, then. Up and down. Make sure you get your candy early on this flight, you know? I usually get it as I get on the plane. I don't waste any time. This guy's been taking pitches. I mean, he must have, in the last three days, 10 rolls, 12. At least 10 rolls of pitches. <laughs> I'll bet he is going to Detroit. I hope he's not driving tonight, though. I <laughs> guess somebody else driving. The 0 2. Missing away. 1 and 2. Do I take care of that candy thing when I get on the plane immediately? The candy tray they have? Yeah. I, I take it right away because you always run the chance that Truppiano will get there before you do or the radio guys and steal the rest of the candy. <laughs> which is always a possibility. So I've smartened up my third season. Billy Air to shadow left center field, fall it fast, and it'll fall in front of Kapler. He plays the hop and gets it back in. And all of a sudden now, the Jays with runners at the corners and two down. Now that big swing from a power hitter, and again it was toward the end of the bat, and that immediately freezes Kapler out in center field. And even with his great speed, he can't quite catch up to this one. Plays it safe, make sure it doesn't bounce up over his head. Late break. Sudden here after Timlin got Woodward to strike out, Stewart to line out. Catalanato had the infield hit. And Vernon Wells is now single. Runners at the corners, two down. And here's Carlos Delgado. Walked in the first, fouled out in the third, and struck out in the sixth inning. Takes ball one, didn't offer. You can imagine the second guessing that would have gone on today if uh, Delgado last night would have hit a home run. It would have brought that Jim Tomey thing back again. Instead they, of being put on. Yeah, they elected to pitch to Delgado, and uh, Kim, after a long battle, struck him out. Kim wanted to go right after him. And Grady saying today he was impressed with the way he pitched to him in the first night. Yun Yun Kim was out there. And so the reasoning for pitching to him. Alan Embry up in the Boston pen. Yun-Yun Kim at this point with the lead 7-1 to will likely have the night off. Although uh, he could have been used here if it was a safe situation or if it becomes a safe situation. Delgado lines it to right. Nixon is there to make the catch for the final out. And the Blue Jays strand two. We head to the ninth. Red Sox on top. 7-1. to one. Temperatures reach an all-time high with no end in sight for the next five days. This weather report brought to you by... Mike's Hard Lemonade. When things heat up... Oh, a hard Mike's is good to find. And on Wall Street, pork belly is reaching all-time high. It's Toyota's 
summer fun sales event. You could save thousands with 0% APR financing on 2003 Tundra pickups. Or you could get combined savings of up to $2,165 on most Tundra models or up to $1,070 on most Tacomas. Don't miss these hot summer deals. See your New England Toyota dealer now. The summer fun sales event ends August 4th. I bank at Citizens Bank because their money market account has done 50% better than most money market mutual funds during the past two years. 50% better. I mean, that's really incredible. That's a lot. I feel safe having my money there. Plus, there's a branch right next to Ben & Jerry's. <laughs> When the weather's hot and sticky, a hard mic's is good to find. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, by New England Ford, and by the Bone and Joint Center at Caritas St. Elizabeth's, where you don't have to be an all-star to be treated like one. Nice work. 7 to 1. Red Sox on top as we head to the top of the ninth inning. And the Blue Jays' new pitcher, Scott Service. Eighth appearance out of the bullpen for the Toronto Blue Jays. No record yet. He's worked nine innings, ten hits allowed, and seven earned runs. A couple of walks and eight strikeouts. Opponents hitting 278 off service. We uh, remember him as a member of the Kansas City Royals. Thurman leaves after three innings, giving up four hits, no runs. He didn't walk anybody, and he struck out three. Pretty good relief appearance for Corey Thurman. His first of the year for the Toronto Blue Jays. Todd Walker, one for four tonight. He is one of 13 Red Sox hits. One now to Walker. Scott Service has seen time in Oakland, Kansas City, Cincinnati, San Francisco, Colorado, Montreal, and Philadelphia. We're coming here to Toronto. He has been all those places since we saw him in Kansas City? No. Prior to Kansas City, he had been all those places. Oh, okay. And, and after Kansas City, he's been to Oakland. And the last couple years, been in AAA. Was in Louisville in 2001, Nashville 2002, and here in 2003. And there for a strike to Walker. Full count. Six foot six, 240 pound right hander with the payoff pitch. Chop foul down the first base line. It sucks with double barreled action in the bullpen. Jason Shield and Chad Fox. and ball four to Todd Walker. Now the fifth walk given up tonight by Toronto pitching. It leads off things here in the top of the ninth. Did you see where Randall Simon um, hit up. the sausage? <laughs> in the in uh, what was it, Milwaukee? Milwaukee? Yeah, they had the sausage race there, where it's I guess a kielbasa and a sausage and a whatever else, There's a yeah, couple of things, hot dog. Together. Yeah. I guess and they have these big heads that obviously is not their real head. It's but they're very tall, and I guess when it came by the dugout, 
Randall Simon who swings at everything, right? <laughs> Look at the Took sausage. Took kind of a poke at the sausage <laughs> and hit the top of the head. And the poor girl, I guess, who was inside fell down and it caused a tumbling effect among the kielbasa and the sausage. Kind of clothesline her, actually. And, uh... Did get a misdemeanor or something for that, I, I heard? I think so, yeah. yeah that's, uh, it's too bad. Fortunately, everybody's okay. And thank God that their head is not in that big thing yeah. that sticks up there. Omar lifts it to left. Catalanato moving in. And there's one away. Back to the bag. At first goes Todd Walker with one down. I understand that he was fined $432 for that action and not charged with anything. And the good news is, is that the sausage is okay. And we'll be out there for another race. <laughs> actually took out two of them in one shot because when the sausage was going down the sausage took out the hot dog oh, I thought it was the kobasi it might have been I was confused as to what is what but in, in Pittsburgh they had the pierogies remember yes the pierogi race <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh there I'm just been told that there's a showdown between the pierogies and the uh, Polish sausages in a, a race in August that's terrific That's fabulous news. Will that be televised? Can we show it on Nesson? Sure, we might as well. has been on base three times tonight. He's walked twice, single, fly to center field. It almost hits Manny as it straightens him up, one and two. I feel set up pretty deep for Ramirez. They are straight away for Manny. For a strike to Ramirez, and he strikes out. First strikeout for Scott Service, two down. Like a slider there that didn't slide. It just pretty much stayed straight and picked up the inside corner to Ramirez. It's tough to tell. It may not have been a slider. Maybe it was a fastball, but uh, certainly a strike. So two down in the inning. And here's David Ortiz. Ortiz homering in the sixth inning after he had singled in the fourth. Two for four in the ball game tonight and takes a breaking ball for a strike. Gets away briefly from Tom Wilson who's able to rescue it. Evens up at one and one to Ortiz. Red Sox trailed at one point tonight as the Blue Jays came up with a home run from Vernon Wells back in the first inning. With them on top, one to nothing. Since then, the Red Sox have come up with seven unanswered runs. A run in the second, four in the fourth, two in the sixth, and the Red Sox leading it seven to one. Millar's home run is part of the back to back home runs, Ortiz and Millar. That's a two-run sixth inning. David Ortiz had a pretty good trip. He had uh, four home runs over a 48-hour period in the first two games of the series against the Yankees. And a home run tonight to get him into double figures quickly. Grounded right side. Orlando Hudson picks and throws to end the inning. On to the bottom of the ninth we go from Sky Dome. Seven to one. Red Sox on top. Okay, folks, let's get this party started. Uh, call Seattle. Get McGregor on the phone. Calling him now. Morning. Good morning. Good morning sir. This is Scott McGregor. I'll be out of the office all day. Please leave a message. That's not like McGregor. McGregor's not there? Great. Excuse me, there's a Mr. McGregor here to see you. Southwest Airlines Last Minute Fares. If you're paying more than $149 nonstop to Orlando or Tampa Bay, you're paying too much. You are now free to move about the country. 
Chad Fox into the game. Chad Fox making his 14th appearance. Uh, he worked in the ball game yesterday. An inning had two strikeouts against the Blue Jays. And the pinch hitter Howie Clark stands in to face Chad Fox here in the bottom of the ninth inning. I saw Clark pinch hit last night. And hit by a pitch, I believe. I believe you are correct. Sharp as usual. Timlin worked an inning, giving up two hits. No runs, no walks, and he struck out a batter. Chad Fox, the fourth Boston pitcher of the night. Lee Clark with a wild swing after that pitch. With Timlin returning to Sky Dome and pitching well here tonight over an inning. Red Sox trying to protect the lead here for Ramiro Mendoza. As his second straight good start, it seemed to leave a little bit of a knee problem tonight. In the air to right, struck pretty well. Nixon heading back. This will take him to the track, but he's there for out number one. I'm just looking up at that scoreboard, Don, and I see where the Yankees are tied up with Cleveland at two, and that is uh, going into the ninth inning. So the Red Sox can win, and Cleveland comes back. You're back to two games out of first place. Blue Jays uh, beginning to reel off some losses here in what was a very key series for them. As they'll have the Yankees here beginning tomorrow night for a three-game series. I have to think if they were to lose the three games over the weekend of the Yankees, uh, they may be starting to sell off some of the Jays' team here in the very near future. And it sounds like there are going to be some guys that are available on this team moving forward for J.P. Richardi. Last year was able to cut some losses by getting rid of Raul Mondesi. Even though Carlos Delgado has been on fire, I think it would be very tough to be able to trade him with the salary situation. One hopper, short hop by Nomar, and he's still able to get Eric Hinsky at first base two down. Boy, did Nomar get a little extra on that throw to first base? Zipped it. Kind of a strange hop, uh, almost like a broken bat that was out to him, catches it about at the belt buckle, and then just fires a seed over to first base to get the out. Yeah, Delgado would have to go to a team that's got a whole lot of money. Two down for Reed Johnson. I mean, it seems to me there's only a limited number of teams that could take him on if you think about the Yankees. Well, they already have Giambi at first base, so he's really not an option there. And uh, carrying an enormous salary here, and that's not the direction that Toronto is going in. Lee Johnson, a rookie here with the Blue Jays, batting with two outs, nobody on, last of the night. A very unusual slider that Chad Fox has. It almost drops straight down like a split fingered fastball, but it's not. It is the slider. 
12 to 6 slider. <laughs> One, two. Line back at Fox and into center field. Right back out of the way of that one driven right back where it came from. Because one thing you want to do when you have that slider is keep it down. If you don't keep it down, sometimes it goes sailing right by your head for a base hit. This ball stays up in the zone and uh, Johnson right over the head in the glove of Chad Fox. feet six inches is not far enough at times when it gets back on you. Orlando Hudson grounds it back to Foxy, picks it and ends the ball game. The Red Sox have successfully come into Toronto and swept the Blue Jays in a three-game series of all the games tonight the easiest as they cruise to a 7-1 victory. Been a fine night tonight. Millar and Ortiz going back to back earlier in this one and Kevin Millar ends up with Two hits, scores three times tonight as part of this 7-1 to one win. The Foxwoods chance play of the game, back-to-back -back home runs by the Red Sox in the sixth inning. First, David Ortiz with the line drive to right field. And then Kevin Millar follows with a home run to straightaway center field. The Foxwoods chance plays of the game. How about 12 and a third shutout innings from the Red Sox bullpen in this series? They were one of the biggest keys to this series. The Red Sox in front of 20,113 tonight grabbed their 53rd win of the year. They're 53 and 37 with the win. Ramiro Mendoza gets the win. He's 3 and 3. Lytle takes the loss and falls to 10 and 8. Again, the final score, the Red Sox winning 7 to 1. Jerry Remy, this is Don Orsillo saying so long from Toronto. Now it's time for W.B. Mason's Extra Innings with Bob Rogers and Jim Rice. From Comerica Park in Detroit, Michigan, Nesson presents coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight, the Red Sox battle the Tigers in game one of a three-game weekend series. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Boston Red Sox baseball here on Nesson. Great to have you with us. I'm Bob Rogers alongside Sam Horn. And Sammy, tonight, the Red Sox taking on a Detroit Tigers team. We know how bad they are. I mean, they're right. terrible. They're the worst team in baseball, no question. But they're playing their best baseball of the season. Right, and, and they're contributing that, they say, to their pitching. They won a couple of close games there. And right now, you can really look at uh, their pitching staff. They got a lot of guys on that team that, if they were with other teams, would have much better records. You had the line of the night in the Boston Globe pregame report. You said Mike Maroth is the best 12 game loser in baseball that's high praise <laughs> all right well he's he, he, you know out there there's a lot of guys that still there's a lot of teams that want him because he is like i said he's four and 12 but he has uh, tremendous stuff good lefty out there on the mound yeah there are rumors even that perhaps the red sox would be interested in his services but a lot of teams very interested in mike Moroth because they've seen how well he's pitched for a very bad ball club and the tigers not only bad offensively they don't field the ball very well so a lot of the pitchers numbers can be skewed right because out there defense is what helps you you know you have to be strong up the middle if you don't have a good good, uh, good shortstop and a good center fielder it's going to make for a very long uh, day well what about the red sox offense sam uh, home run wise the home runs are really coming in bunches. And that's what it is. It's like hitting is contagious. Anytime you have somebody that's up there swinging the bat extremely well, then the next person don't want to really be showing up. But you go out there, and that's your efforts. You're trying to, you know, put on a good show. And as you see, Kevin Millar, he's uh, following right after Ortiz. Both of these guys couldn't be hotter at a better time. So for the Red Sox, offensively, they're just potent. They're actually on pace, Sam, to break the team record for most home runs in a single season, which was sent back in 1977. So we're ready for baseball here on Ness, and it's the Red Sox and Tigers coming up at Comerica Park. See you after the ball game on W.B. Mason's Extra Innings. Enjoy the game. Hard work, experience, lead to success. Hamill, Waxler, Allen, and Collins, personal injury law.
Whatever happened to the house call? The doctor would show up at the front door and treat the patient right there at home. Who does that anymore? Well, SBC does. Won't be long. Only our black bag is a yellow laptop. They may not be doctors, but they do make house calls. Phone? I have good news. The customer. That's who we answer to. SBC.